Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll go over 30 graphic design terms you should know. This would be helpful if you're working with a graphic designer, if you wanna become a graphic designer, or if you just need a refresher. My name is Angela and I'm a visually impaired designer. The first term we have today is a serif font. This is a font that has strokes attached to the end of the larger strokes in a letter or a symbol. And some common examples of a serif font would be Baskerville, Times New Roman, and Garamond. The next term is a sans serif font. This is a font that does not have a serif at the end of the letter form strokes. Sans means without. And some common examples of sans serif fonts would be Helvetica, Arial, and Futura. The next term is a slab serif font. This is a font that has serifs, but the serifs are bolder they're blocky, they can be angular or rounded, and they're very blunt. Some common examples of a slab serif font would be Rockwell and Memphis. The next term is a script font. This is a font that mimics handwriting. So this could be calligraphy, hand lettering. The point is that a script font looks like it's written by someone and then it's converted into a font. Script fonts can make it feel more personal and inviting so that might be one reason why you use a script font. The next term is a style guide. This is a set of standards for the writing, formatting, and design of documents that helps make the design consistent and cohesive. So with every design project, you can create a style guide which usually includes what the typefaces you use, the colors, different little elements that you use. It gives rules so that if someone else were to take the style guide from you, a different designer, they could recreate the same brand or identity and feeling that you were going for by following what's inside your style guide. The next term is a thumbnail. This is a small image representation of an idea and usually it's intended to make it easier and faster to explore many ideas. So usually thumbnails are done at the beginning of the design process so that you can get all your ideas out really fast and then you can take from those thumbnails and create higher fidelity designs that you wanna explore from your initial ideas. Not all ideas need to be fully fleshed out or explored. So this makes it so that you can kind of weed out the ideas you don't think will work. Now the next two terms are related, a typeface and a font. So first, a typeface is a particular set of glyphs, including the alphabet and the corresponding characters, such as the numerals and punctuation that share a common design. And then a font is a particular size, weight, and style of a typeface. So to illustrate this point, Helvetica is a typeface. However, a font would be Helvetica Bold or Helvetica Light. And so a font is more specifically referring to that specific thing that you'll be using within a typeface. The next term is white space. This is the empty area between and around design elements. So when you have elements on a page or a screen or whatever, and then anything that isn't a design element is considered white space. So it can be good to intentionally include white space in your design so that it's not overwhelming and it's easier to digest your design. Now we're gonna talk about some typography specific terms. So kerning, this is one of my favorite terms. It's a detail that I really think makes a big difference. Kerning is the spacing between two individual letters or characters. So an example that I've seen that illustrates this point really well is if you take the word kerning itself and you put the letters R and N too close together, then it reads kemming instead of kerning. And this illustrates the reason why it's so important to pay attention to the spacing between each individual letter or character. The next term is tracking. This is the space between letters or characters within a whole line or block of text. So kerning was between two different characters and tracking is spacing it out on the whole line. The next term is letting. This is the spacing between lines of text. So if you have a page or a paragraph of text, the spacing between each line that's on top of each other is called letting. The next term is an orphan. An orphan is a single word at the end of a paragraph. 
So if you look at this paragraph here, you can see that there's one word at the end and it kind of makes it feel disconnected from the rest of the paragraph. So you wanna avoid having one singular word or sometimes I'll avoid having two or three words on a line to help make it connected to the lines above. The next term is a widow. This is a paragraph ending line that falls at the beginning of the following page or column, which separates the line from the rest of the text. So similar to an orphan, this is a line of text that's separated from the rest of the paragraph. Especially when it's the beginning of a page, this can really disconnect it from the rest of the thought from the paragraph before. So it's important to make sure to avoid that situation. You can either move some of the lines from the previous page down to the next page, or you can find a way to move that line up to the previous page so that it's with the rest of the paragraph. Alignment is a term that's used commonly in graphic design. This is the next term. And this is lining up text or graphics to create a reference point to guide the eye through the text. Now alignment is commonly used when talking about typography. So there's right aligned, center aligned, there's left aligned, and then there's justified when both sides of the text is lined up. This can also refer to any type of element, including graphics and how they work together to be straight. And this creates a connection between the different elements. The next term is crop marks. So these are lines that are printed in the corners of a sheet of paper to show where to trim the paper to size. So when you print something, you just make the setting so that you have crop marks and this will help you know where exactly to cut your paper so it's exactly what size you intended. The next term is bleed. This also relates to printing. So when you're printing the area that goes beyond the final trim edge of your design, and this helps you with cutting errors. So basically it's printed beyond what you intended, but if you cut on your crop marks and you're, you have slight error or it's just off a little bit, you'll still have the background color instead of the color of the paper. So if the background of your design was black or a darker color and you're printing on a white paper, this helps make it so that there's not weird, awkward white lines where you cut inaccurately. It basically just gives you a buffer for when you're cutting. Body copy is the next term, and this is the text forming the main content of a book, a magazine, a web page, or any other printed or digital work. So this is the meat, the whole main part of the content. If you have a newspaper, you have the heading and then some other maybe small things like who's the author, and then the actual part that is the news article that's called body copy. The next term is a character. This is a single element such as a letter, a number, or a punctuation mark. So we use the word character because it encompasses all the things, not just letters of the alphabet. The next term is a display typeface. This is a typeface that is intended for use for larger sizes for headings rather than extended passages of body text. So we just talked about body copy. You wouldn't use a display typeface for body copy because it would make it not legible. It would be difficult on your eyes to look at a more frivolous font when trying to read a large body of copy. So display typeface is meant to be for shorter amounts of text and when it's larger. The next term is a grid. This is a system for organizing layout. This can be implementing column and row guidelines to follow to help you create structure. So the idea is if you pick how many column and rows you want, then you can align your elements within those column and rows and it will make it unified and give the person looking at your design a guiding line of where they should look next. The next term is hierarchy. This is the organization of visual elements in a composition and this helps the user know the importance of the elements. So if every element is the same size, it's gonna be hard for someone to know where to look first. So this is referring to deciding what has the most importance, making them larger or bolder, or using a certain kind of color that stands out more. And this provides hierarchy so that when someone looks at your design, they know exactly what the most important element is, and then they can follow through your design and know exactly what to look at next. A ligature is where two letters or characters 
are joined as one single glyph. Sometimes ligatures are used because when you're doing the kerning, it makes it easier if they're combined and it looks like one character. And there's also some common ones that are just used over time, such as A and E next to each other. The next term is a drop cap. This is a letter at the beginning of a word, a chapter, or a paragraph that is larger than the rest of the text. Drop caps have been used for quite some time, and a drop cap can be used to help you know where to start in the text so that it makes it easy to know where to begin. Margin is the white space or blank border on each side of a page. So the little area around the body copy or different elements that make it so that there's some breathing room on each side. A mock-up is a scale or full-size model of a design used for teaching, demonstration, design evaluation, or other reasons. Mock-ups can be commonly used to help basically show what the design might actually look like. It makes it feel more realistic without actually having to execute it because if you're trying to do something maybe larger or more time consuming, say you're making a mural and you wanna be able to show your client what the mural will look like, you can mock it up on a wall that's in an image in Photoshop and then it will help them better visualize what it might look like when it's done. The next term is a monospace font. This is a font whose letters and characters each occupy the same amount of horizontal space. The next term is a mood board. This is the arrangement of images, materials, pieces of text, etc. And this is intended to evoke or project a particular style or concept. This can be for yourself so that you can kind of get the feel, the mood that you want moving into a project, or it can be to show a client that you're working with so that you can make sure you're on the same page as far as style goes and showing examples of existing designs that you think is in the right realm of what you're going to design. The next term is a quick key or shortcuts. This is a series of one or several keys that invoke a software program to perform a pre-programmed action. And usually it makes it so that you can do things more quickly. For example, instead of having to go up to the menu to print, I can just click Command P on my Mac and it will bring up the print dialog a lot faster than having to navigate to it at the menu. Now, if you can get really good at shortcut keys, it can really save you time. There's so many different shortcut keys that I use that I don't even realize I'm using anymore and it just makes my work go so much faster. Let me know if you're interested in a video about talking about my favorite shortcut keys and what programs you would want to see the shortcut keys for. The last term I have for you is rag. This refers to the irregular or uneven vertical margins of a block of text. A poor rag creates distracting shapes of white space in the margin. So if you look at the edge where it's not aligned, if it was right aligned, then on this other left side edge, the text will end at different points. And so looking at rag is seeing the shape that it creates on the left side. So you can do some maneuvering of words and letters. You can use hyphens if you want. I think overall avoiding hyphens is a good practice. So looking at the shape and what it makes when you're looking at the rag is gonna be very important. That's all the terms I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel below and turn on the notification bell. I hope that you all have a fantastic week and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye!